In this engineering skills Python project, we're going to write a 2D truss analysis app using Victor, the low code engineering app development platform. So sharing your, your analyses uh, in the form of a web app, an app that can be run in the browser essentially, um, is a great way of sharing the details of your analyses with uh, project stakeholders or colleagues, but without necessarily having to share the code that powers those analyses. So this is the app that we're gonna build. As I said, it's a 2D trust analysis app. Now it's quite a simple app, but don't let that fool you because in building this, we're gonna cover an awful lot of the basics that are going to allow you to go on and build your own apps by the time you finish this project. So this app is based on the, the Python scripts that we built in a previous tutorial for analyzing uh, 2D trusses using OpenSeas. And in fact, we can see that, uh, that script here on the right. So this was the guy we built previously. Um, this is in a Jupyter Notebook. Um, I'm a huge fan of Jupyter Notebooks. I think they're a fantastic resource. And this notebook will do all of the analysis that we want it to do. Um, but it, it, it has a certain barrier to entry when it comes to sharing this, particularly if you're trying to share it with somebody who's not familiar with Python. There is, um, I suppose, a reasonable amount of code in here. And if, if, if the other user of this, uh, of this notebook isn't familiar with Python, there's gonna be a bit of a barrier to entry there because you know that can look quite intimidating if you don't know what you're looking at. And that's where our web app comes in over on the left-hand side here. So let's take a look through this guy here. So again, this, this app is gonna do all of the exact same analysis, but it's gonna allow the end user to interact with, uh, with the tool essentially uh, in a much easier way. So the first thing we have here is a welcome screen. We can customize that to, uh, to whatever we like. Naturally enough, I have engineering skills plastered all over it, but you could have whatever you want um, on, on a welcome screen, obviously. Then we come into the data input section. So this is where the end user would, would basically define the analyses that they're going to uh, they're going to perform. So we start off by um, providing some constants. And so we've got Young's modulus here and we've got a cross-sectional area. And those are basically mirroring, if I look at our original source script here, that's mirroring the data input over here. So we then have a deflection scale factor, which allows us to increase the scale of the deflected shape just so it makes it a little bit easier to see. Coming on down from there, we have the structure definition. So define the geometry of the structure. Now, the way I've written this is that um, we want the end user to be able to upload a CSV file that defines the geometry of the structure. And of course, we can we can explain what the format of that CSV file should be. But we've also made it possible for the user to download a sample geometry file. And so they can download a sample geometry file. They can see how it's put together, uh, modify it if they like like and then they can upload a geometry file. So either the, the sample file directly upload that again, so they have something to work with straight away, or they can upload their own geometry file, obviously. So if we go ahead and upload the uh, sample geometry file that I downloaded previously, we can see our upload window opens up. We can select a file. Let's get that guy there and open it up save selection and then straight away our structure appears on the right hand side our very familiar sample structure that we sort of roll out for all of these project builds and tutorials once we've defined our structure we can see it over on the right hand side next we can come on down and define some restraints and again defining restraints is is much more user friendly in this setting than it is over in the Jupyter notebook so we can define a node number let's say node number one we'd like to be a pin and node number, let's say five, we would like to be a roller in the X direction. Now we can come down to defining our applied loads. Let's just keep it simple. We'll apply onto node four, a load of let's say minus 10,000, the Y direction. And once that's done, we can go ahead and view our graphical results. And we can see our axial force diagram on top here and our deflected shape on the bottom. And we can go back up to our slider, our scale slider and change the 
scale of that deflected shape to make it a little bit more obvious. And so you can see if I compare the output on the left with the output of our Jupyter notebook on the right, of course it's the exact same thing because we're using this Jupyter notebook as the basis for the app that we're building over here on the left. All right then, so let's focus in on our app again. We can review our results in table format so we can see all of our nodal displacements all of our member forces and all of our reactions well our two reactions in our structure so there you have it it's a it's a much more um easily shareable uh, and easy to interact with a version of our analysis um that doesn't come with the same baggage or the same barrier to entry that a Jupyter notebook would come with. Uh, and the final thing we can do is we could export our results in a CSV file if our end user wanted to do any further uh, reporting with them. So I hope you'll agree there's a lot of benefits to being able to convert at least some of your scripts from pure Jupyter notebooks or Python files over to um, more user-friendly shareable web applications. So on this project, we're going to walk through the complete build process for this app, right from setting up our development environment through to deploying our finished app online. So I'll see you inside the project.